former Arkansas governor, Mike Huckabee. Uh, he is also a Fox News contributor. Mike, always great to see you. Um, what did you make of the USA Today saying that, and I'm going to quote this because you probably won't believe it if you didn't see it, but I know you read it. <laughs> Even Trump's fiercest critics say he may have uh, good uh, some world affairs, right, uh, including getting together on China. Uh, why the change in heart now among uh, some Trump, Trump critics? I think because they're going to realize that what President Trump has done in foreign policy over the past four years has been unbelievably useful, helpful, and good for the world, not just America. How could anybody think that it's inappropriate for an American president to say America first? We don't elect a president of Europe. We don't elect one for Asia or the Middle East. We elect a president to be our president to put America's interest first and foremost. After all, that's what we're paying for with our taxes. But if you look, Julie, at what this president has done, and I jotted some things down, the USMCA, the oil and gas initiatives that have made us energy independent for the first time in 100 years. We've got a, a, a thawed relationship with North Korea. Not perfect, but better than it was. Look what we've done with Taiwan. The most significant thing is the pushback on China, where this president has had the guts to do what no one else has done, and that's say we're not going to just roll over for mm -hmm. these communists and let them push us around. Add to that Middle East realignment, where you've got Middle East countries now having diplomatic relationships with Israel. What's happened in Israel, the recognition of the Golan Heights, the recognition of Jerusalem, moving the embassy. Joe Biden voted for that, but it never happened until Donald Trump was president. Add to that NATO. Mm -hmm. Finally, these European nations paying their fair share, the Paris Climate Accords, which did nothing for the U.S., but did a lot to give China an excuse and India an excuse, and then the Iran policy, which uh, really put a cramp on their desire to fund terrorism. Right. Those are a few of the things, Julie. The former acting ambassador to the U.K. says, and I'm quoting, um, in certain areas, I think his instincts were right, getting tougher on China, like you just mentioned, and trying to really address some of Beijing's trade practices and military expansion in the South China Sea. That needed to be done. Uh, is this a sign that maybe America first wasn't so bad after all? America first was great. I mean, it truly was a brilliant approach. It's the approach that we should have been taking all along. But our approach was driven by uh, really globalists who were more interested in profits for multinational corporations. They were big political donors. They got what they wanted, but at the expense of a lot of American workers. So when the president renegotiated NAFTA and turned it into USMCA, it finally gave American workers yeah. protection. And I thought that's what we were supposed to be doing. I'm glad the president did what he did. I hope Joe Biden doesn't mess it all up. Here's the president yesterday on his foreign policy record. Let's watch. Peace through strength. And that's what we have now is peace through strength. You look at what's going on. No wars. They're saying, wow, the president, four years, no wars. We stopped the wars and we won as you know, 100 percent of the ISIS caliphate. As the president leaves office, though, many are fearing that he is ordering a precipitous withdrawal of U.S. forces from Iraq and Afghanistan that could potentially come back and haunt the next administration. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, uh, the president would have been criticized if he did up the number of troops that we had. Instead, he did what he promised he would do. It's why people mm -hmm. elected him, to get us unentangled from the longest war in our nation's history, longer than Vietnam, longer than World War II, World War I, the Civil War, any war we've ever been in. He's trying to get us out of it, and he's done exactly what he said. Uh, you know, the president got in trouble not because he failed to keep his promises. Frankly, he messed up a lot of people because he did keep his promises. They were promises that did put America right. first. I think we're going to miss him a lot if he right. doesn't uh, stay in office the next four years. Okay, so the president did have a complicated record in some regard. Um, Martin Indyk, he is a former U.S. diplomat and now a fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations think tank, says that the president got a hell of a lot more wrong than he got right. And I want your reaction to this. You know, he threatened war with North Korea and Iran. He picked trade fights with Canada. He publicly attacked American allies and praised ruthless dictators. Uh, what is your reaction to all of that? Well, that, that's typical from the uh, Council of Foreign Relations. They've gotten it wrong. Uh, they were the ones who pushed us into neoconservative wars that uh, ended up getting us nothing. The fact is the president did a lot of pushing. Yeah, he did. He did a lot of big talking. But the result 
was that NATO is now stronger than it was, not weaker, and the other nations are paying their way. Canada, Mexico are a part of a much better trade deal for the United States than we were in before. So when people talk like that, you got to remember, these are globalists talking. They honestly think America lasts, everybody else first. Let's surrender to everybody. Thank God this president thought America ought to be first. That's what we pay for when we pay our taxes. And uh, as I said before, Julie, right. I think a lot of folks are going to miss him.